in walks this woman with this huge hat. 60 seconds. Right in front of me. Oh, boy! What, what? what? Come on, let's get some names here. While one degree X. A little coffee, a little Jack. Starting the day off right with your bestest pal, Raul. How many people are playing this morning? Okay, you're a single player, is that right? Alrighty then, could you type in your name, please? One more thing, you looking for a 21 question game or more like a 7 question game? I got it, in fact, I'm all over 30 it. 30 seconds. This is five. Okay, your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. That's B as in, as in the letter B on your keyboard. Mavis. Mavis. Just put a little duck in uh, uh, no, like a rental car company? No. Alright, listen up. Soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. Got that? Ten seconds. Good luck. Nine. Eight. Lose the desktop. And five. Go to black. Four. Three. Have a good show, people. The former Child Star Support Network. Just because you're not acting doesn't mean you shouldn't be living. Just so you know, we are out of raisinets, but the good news is we have plenty of goobers. Ah, the game of solitaire. That's okay, I'm here alone too. So let's get it on. I need a cat. For the enjoyment of everyone during question one, please, no unnecessary talking. Shh, here we have... It's a first! And we got 3,000 bucks in the pot. Just step up and take a swing at this one. Imagine you're in a maternity ward and D.W. Griffith hands you a cigar to commemorate the arrival of his groundbreaking 1950. D.W. Griffith's 1915 movie, Birth of a Nation. Okay. Okay. Your party won't last long, though. The actors in blackface and D.W. Griffith's glorification of the KKK in that movie are grosser than afterbirth. Category, please. Let's see what we got going. That's my brother, but we ain't related. Two G's if you get this one right. Get your finger out of your ear and listen up. We're going. If the actors who play the Delta House brothers in Animal House initiated some of their other characters as new pledges, what Delta brother Tom Hulse played Mozart a couple of years later in Amadeus. Yeah, he'd also be the one blurring Sweet Home Salzburg out his window. Question so real you can almost touch it. <laughs> Filmed in spectacular 3D. <laughs> the category drive by drive in. One thousand dollars at stake on this one. Hey, check it out. To increase business, some drive ins have been made interactive. Imagine you're at a drive in watching Touch of Evil. If your car is wired the same way as the car in the famous tracking shot, what will happen? Your car will explode when the scene ends, you'll get locked in with the motor running, the concession stand will control your radio, or you'll be filmmaking out in the back seat. It would have been so beautiful if you'd only picked this. The tr tracking shot alternately follows Charlton Heston and Janet Lee crossing the Mexican-U.S. border on foot and a car that comes in and out of the shot before exploding. So your car would explode and they wonder why no one goes to drive in theaters anymore. Okay, I need a category. My question for... For your enjoyment, Cowabunga Ape, $3,000 for this one. Boy, I tell you, that Homer Simpson can sure act like a big ape sometimes. Which makes me wonder, if Bart Simpson were transformed into an ape and lived on the planet of the apes, what important school lesson would he have to write? Ape will never kill ape. So saith the teachers on the planet of the apes. 
I'm sure his teachers will soon have Bart writing, Ape will never moon ape 100 times also. Okay, pick a category. Piece of Prime. All the time. Five. This one's called, I Love You. How does $2,000 sound? Alrighty then, get focused and try to complete the following analogy. Little Bo Peep is the sheep as... Bruce Willis is the Demi Moore, Willy Wonka is the chocolate factory. Little Bo Peep lost her sheep just like Pee Wee lost his bike in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Of course, Bo Peep didn't ride her sheep. Well, did she? I need a category. Will it play in gum disease? Play in gum disease? What, pyorrhea? Uh, oh, God. All right, I get it. Hey, listen, kids. Uh, it looks like we're going on a fiber optic field trip to the heartland of America. Pyorrhea, I mean Peoria, Illinois, with the area code 309. Hey kids, go pack a sack lunch, cause we're going on a fiber optic field trip. Okay, let's grab the white pages for Peoria. And uh, let's try calling um, William J. Langley Jr. Okay, William J. Langley Jr. But wasn't Peoria part of the vaudeville circuit or something? Oh, wait, uh, here we go. Hello? Yeah, hi there. How's it playing in Peoria? Uh, how's what playing? Oh, never mind. Uh, is this William J. Langley Jr.? Uh, yes. Can I uh, help you with something? Well, maybe you can. Uh, my name's Cookie, and I'm the host of a movie trivia game show. And actually, I was hoping that you would like to take part in it. How does that strike you? Uh, keep talking. Well, it won't take much time. It's a lot of fun. You know, how about it, Bill? Oh, can I, can I call you Bill? Uh, well, uh, go ahead and call me Jim. No one who really knows me calls me Bill. I don't really know you either, but whatever. Uh, you're not connected with the movie industry by any chance, are you, Jimbo? Well, uh, not really. I, I teach scenic design. Oh, scenic design like in the theater. That, that's pretty close to the movie biz. Where do you teach? It's a program down at Bradley University. Bradley, huh? I, I hear they've had some pretty good basketball teams down there. I hear that, too. Ah, nothing like Bradley humor. All right, Jim, listen, that's my quota for chit-chat today. So, we need to know. Are you going to help us with some movie trivia here? Well, I'll, uh, I'll sure give it a try. What do I have to do? Just hang tight, and I'll put you on the line with one of our producers. That sound okay? Sounds good. Excellent. We'll be right back with Jim Langley of Peoria, Illinois, in just a bit. Right now, let's see some categories. Category, please. She was built like an interstate cloverleaf, made for speed with all the right curves. All I could think of was six. Let's give a nice warm welcome to Hooking the Big One. This one's worth a grand. Grease yourself up and get ready to wrestle. In Grumpy Old Men, Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon are avid fishermen. How could they best use co-star Daryl Hannah's character from Splash to aid their angling? Cut her up and use her for bait, learn her spear gun technique, borrow her boat, or have her cut their hair with a fish. Daryl Hannah plays a mermaid in Splash. Better than grub worms and almost as sexy. All right, hit me. The selection is the movie theater, just a dark place to fall asleep. And we're talking 2000 for this, baby. All right, you know what? I'm tired of all those action-packed movie ad campaigns. Let's see something a little different. If you were to design a boring yet accurate poster for the classic thriller Double Indemnity, which tagline would you use? Learn the passions of a contract lawyer. Thrill to the life of an accountant. Enter the sizzling world of insurance sales. Or systems analysis. Share the fan... Here's part of the thrilling life of an accountant. Subtraction. <laughs> Let's take a look at the right answer. <laughs> Double indemnity is about an insurance salesman who gets more sizzle than he bargained for. Boy, I bet it'd be even more exciting in 3D. I need a category. Hey, a 
All right, guess what you just picked? It's time to play Dis or Dad. The category for this Dis or Dad question is West Side Conspiracy Theory. I'm going to read off seven movies. Oh, I see you've got this thing down. Well, I'll put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's dance. Damn Yankee Stoner Musical. Midnight Express. Platoon. Brigadoon. Oliver. Nixon. The King and I. Let's go get the one you skipped. Midnight Express. That's all you wrote. You only missed one. Not too bad. Let's add your winnings to your total. Take it if you can get it. Let's move on. Okay, pick a kick. They said it was indestructible. Then disaster struck. Say hello to, well, blow me down. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Oh, no. Olive Oil misreads the movie description at her local video rental store. Instead of seeing her hunky sailor boyfriend, Olive Oil watches a movie featuring a New York City cop nicknamed Popeye. What film did Olive rent? Magnum Force, Serpico, What's Up Doc, or the French... Serpico? Serpa, no. For the curious, here's the right answer. Gene Ackman played the part of Jimmy Popeye Doyle in The French Connection. I love the part where Officer Doyle intercepts a huge shipment of spinach before it reaches the seedy New York underworld. Okay, I need a... And I believe this one's called a stock answer to a fashionable question. I'm giving out three grand for a right answer. All right, imagine you're ordering a collection of custom tailored jackets made out of the same materials that have been used for film stock. Based on its level of flammability, which of these is the last type of film stock material you'd want to use for your smoking jacket? Polyester, nitrate, mylar, or acetate? Acetate? Obviously, you don't know Jack. At Here's what you should have picked. Cellulose nitrate, the first film stock, was extremely flammable. Sadly, it was no longer in use when the towering inferno was made. That's it for round one. Let's go to round two. Now remember, everything in round two is worth... Alright, we're back at our fiber optic field trip with Jim Langley of Peoria, Illinois. Yo, Jimbo, you still with us? I'm right here. Okay, hit us with your question. Okay, the category is words of wisdom, Lloyd. Words of wisdom. And this one's five grand. Put your fingers on the buzzer, and here we go. In the movie The Shining, what does the character Jack Torrance tell the bartender Lloyd that he's having a problem with upstairs? The old red rum, the old sperm bank, the old carpet cruncher, or the old scotch hose? Ah, Jimbo, tell them what they should have picked. In The Shining, Jack Nicholson's character complains to his phantom bartender that he's having a bit of a, of a problem with the old sperm bank upstairs. Then he tries to make a deposit with an axe. Hey, great question, Jim. I'll bet that one really plays in Peoria. By the way, Jim, do you ever get tired of hearing people say stuff like that about Peoria? Very. Okay, enough said. Uh, Jim Langley of Peoria, Illinois, folks. Thanks again, Jimbo. Goodbye, man. Okay, let's get back to the next category. Category, please. Did someone order a 12-inch sausage? Oh, my. 
Okay, give it up for Cheech and Chong have that effect on people. You get 4,000 clams for this one. Flex those fingers, because here it comes. Considering the condition his character is in at the end of Nice Dream, Stacy Keach could have taken the title role in which of the following movies? Day of the Dolphin, Night of the Iguana, Day of the Jackal, or Night of the Living Dead? Bet you wish you'd pick this. At the end of Nice Dream, Stacy Keach turns into a huge lizard from smoking some of Cheech and Chong's stash. So, although drugs may not in fact kill, they will leave your skin dry and scaly. I need a category. <laughs> Thirteen. All right, here's the deal. I like to watch people play board games. And you pop a right answer, you got 2,000 bucks. Strap on your helmet, we're going in. Imagine you're playing Monopoly with Peter Sellers' simple-minded character from being there. Which space on the board might he think is named after him? Marvin Gardens, Chance, Jail, or St. James Place? That's not going to cut it. You should have taken a chance. <laughs> Peter Sellers' character in Being There is Chance the Gardener. I don't remember, isn't Being There the movie where he gets to see Shirley MacLaine's community chest? All right, hit me. Now showing, this question may save your life someday. You give me a right answer, I give you a quick 4,000. Ready? Commit this to memory. When performing two-person CPR, give two breaths, then beat on their chest five times. Now let's have some fun. You're having a heart attack. Because these two wrote the five heartbeats, whom would you trust most to perform the two-breath, five-heartbeat method of CPR? Bernadette Peters and Andy. No, the Hughes brothers are responsible for dead presidents. Clearly, they know nothing about saving lives. Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. The Five Heartbeats was written by Robert Townsend and Keenan Ivory Wayans. And if you ever really need help, stay away from the guys who wrote Flatliners. Okay, pick a category. In the deepest reaches of the Congo lies question 15. I proudly present Superman Fools Around. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Okay, imagine the Daily Planet is holding a Christmas party and Clark Kent decides to play some practical jokes. Based on the powers he demonstrates in the first Superman movie, which prank would Clark Kent not pull? Reversing time so they all get drunk again, shrinking himself and hiding in Lois's skirt, telling Jimmy what his wrapped presents are, or tossing Perry off the roof then catching him. Superman doesn't shrink himself in the movie. But I did hear Superman complaining of shrinkage after the party went skinny dipping. Okay, I need a cat. Uh-oh, wet sucked its shine floor. It's time for a Snickerglish restroom. Lights, camera, here's your gibberish category. Unusual Thanksgiving compliments. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10K. Now check it out. As the time disappears, so does the money. So the sooner you buzz in, the better. Okay, tell me with what movie actress's name does this rhyme? She is a deaf turkey. First hint, she played a high school student on TV. Tootie? Oh, wait. She played a high school student on TV. And you want it? You got it. I don't care how bad the movie is. She can give me a lap dance anytime she wants. Category, please. The 
other category is crime pays, but to whom should I write the check? And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, remember when the guy gets killed at the beginning of Casablanca and Claude Rains tells his cops to round up the usual suspects? If instead of the usual suspects, the Casablanca cops brought in the mysterious villain from the movie The Usual Suspects, all positions are filled, but thank you for applying. The correct answer is... Kaiser Soze is the mysterious villain in The Usual Suspects. He's played by Kevin Spa- Hey, hey, uh, you've seen it, right? Okay. Question 18. Honor student by day? Stripper by night. Well, what do we have here? Kids these days. Oh, let's just make this one $6,000. Pull out your antenna and get ready to buzz. If Bernardo Bertolucci's 1979 film Luna were remade today as one of those Honey, I Did Something Wacky to the Kids movies, which of these would be the best title? Honey, I cut the kids' heads off. Honey, I had sex with the kids. Honey, the kids aren't ours. Or, Honey, I ate the kids. Let's see what a correct answer looks like. In the 1979 film Luna, Jill Clayburg has sex with her son. No brainer though, who wouldn't rather have sex with Jill Clayburg than Rick Moranis? Alright, hit me. Coming at you, a star is accessorizing. I'm sending over 4,000 dead presidents if you get this one. Let's see how you handle this one. In the 1954 film A Star is Born, characters Norman and Vicky appear together at the... Norman accidentally smacks Vicky in the face while begging for a job at the Academy Awards, so a face mask would be the best choice for an accoutrement. Yeah, I think the Academy ended up giving Norman two minutes for roughing and a game misconduct. I need a category. Chew on this. Could have been a contender. How does $2,000 sound? Remember the 1988 presidential campaign when Michael Dukakis started dressing in military fatigues to show how tough he was? Well, try to picture this. If Michael Dukakis tried to show voters he was capable of winning the election the same way his cousin won an Oscar that year, what might he have done? Mike's cousin, Olympia Dukakis, won an Oscar for playing Cher's mother in Moonstruck. You know, that might have worked. I mean, George Bush was a mother, and he won. Okay, I need a category. All right, fine. You want to get to the attack? Consider it done. You may need this clue. If it's good enough for mom or dad, okay, time to make your folks proud. Have at it.
man, your score is through the roof. Very impressive. Too bad there's no other players around to impress. Guess this will be our little secret, because as far as the rest of the world is concerned... You don't know Jack! Nice work, people. Cue the commercials, and Raul, what's happening? We going again? The trivia game. Number one with a bullet in my mouth. You make me ill. Stop gloating. If you want to play again, just holler. I'll be over here by the open window.